Hello again. Welcome back for another streaming recommendation. I am Jared Case, curator of film exhibitions at the Dryden Theater and the George Eastman Museum. Uh, there is a concept in archiving, whether it's film archiving or any other sort of collection management, that has to do with the history of an object, and the term for that concept is provenance. It doesn't just cover how you obtain that object and put it in your collection, or who it came to you from, but it's the entire history of that object from its inception until the point where it did come into your collection. There are prints that we have in our collection that are enhanced by a very unique provenance, and I'm going to tell you about one of those today. Uh, it's a little film called Fear and Desire from 1953. It just happens to be Stanley Kubrick's feature film directorial debut. And for a long time, the George Eastman Museum was thought to be the only uh, institution that had any material on this. Uh, Kubrick famously disliked the film after its production, and he didn't want it to be shown. We do have correspondence with his office where he's asking us uh, not to show it. We might show it to individuals, but not to groups, not to program it, and not to certainly not to rent it out or to duplicate it in any way. Uh, that was until the early 90s when the original negative was found in Puerto Rico and it was obtained by the Library of Congress, which is where the transfer that you're going to see comes from. This is streaming on Amazon Prime Video, and it's not a long film to watch. It's only a little over an hour long, but it is very interesting. I Often we... Uh, have directors or, or artists that look back upon their early work as inferior. And certainly if you're going to hold this up against some of Kubrick's greatest works, uh, it's not going to stand the test of time. But it is very interesting to see someone that you respect to the point that we respect Kubrick and his early efforts. There are uh, themes and there are techniques that you can see. It, he doesn't have the budget. The budget was only tens of thousands of dollars, ranging somewhere from thirteen to fifty-three thousand dollars. It was shot silent, much like the westerns in the '60s were in Italy, and it was uh, dubbed in uh, post-production. Uh, so he w wasn't able to do a lot of tracking shots, but there were close-ups, and, and the lighting that he used was very uh, indicative of the way that he looked at cinema and the way it could be used. Uh, it's a very simple story. It actually reminds me more of a sort of an hour-long Twilight Zone episode. There are four soldiers that are trapped behind enemy lines of a, a nameless war. Uh, you, you might think of World War II based on the uniforms that they wear, but uh, the, the conflict is unnamed and the, the uh, countries are unnamed. You, all you know is that it's war, and the film explores the effect that war has on these soldiers in what it prompts them to do or what it prompts them to become. And over this uh, hour-long narrative, uh, we do focus on the different four soldiers and their interaction with the enemy, as well as some of the townspeople that they meet and their plans to get back over to their own side. So a black and white film uh, made for a, a very small budget after uh, Kubrick had uh, was a photographer at Look Magazine, and he had directed a couple of short documentaries. This is what he wanted to do, but he wanted it buried. I think you should go take a look at it. It's a fascinating film. Again, it's over on Amazon Prime Video, and please come on back for another recommendation.